here after the story to come up with a new one. Okay? So see you guys soon. The Crazy Fries and the Fryosaurus. On the other side of a thin layer of ketchup spilled on your fridge years ago, there lives a civilization of french fries in an upside down parallel universe. Their community was made up of all different kinds of french fries. Crinkle cuts, shoestrings, seasoned wedges, beef steaks, and even fresh cuts with potato skin still on. The tater tots were the beloved children of all the French fry people. The French fry village and all its magic came from the gigantic French fry that grew in the middle of their village. It brought the community peace and prosperity if the villagers danced around its base. One morning, while all the tater tots were out playing in the meadow, there was a loud roar from the sky. A large beast was falling from the heavens. The beast was an Ankylosaurus, a giant prehistoric dinosaur with a club tail. He accidentally fell through the fabric of space-time when he stepped on a rotten tomato and found himself plummeting to the new strange place. The dinosaur landed with an enormous crash that shook the ground. The impact knocked him unconscious. The tater tots screamed and ran home while their potato parents cried out for them. It was the next morning by the time the hungry dinosaur woke up, and he was very hungry. The dinosaur noticed a large golden yellow tower in the distance. His mouth began to water, and he didn't know why. So he wandered closer, following his stomach's natural instincts. When he arrived in the village, all the French fry folk were hidden away in their potato skin houses. There, in the middle of the town square, stood a crispy, golden potato tower. As he got closer, the dinosaur could smell the crispy starch, and his mouth began to water even more. The dinosaur stood on his hind legs and stretched his neck as long as he could and with one big chomp ate the top right off of the giant magical french fry. The crunch echoed for miles and rattled the windows throughout the village. The tater tots still cried. With every chomp, he'd eaten half of the magical giant french fry. The French fries decided something had to be done to protect their magical French fry. They had never, ever lived without it. While the dinosaur was eating their fry, the French fries gathered under darkness and made a plan. The French fries were very peaceful people, so their plan was to convert the French fry eating dinosaur onto a more French fry friendly diet. Their favorite food, cheeseburgers. The challenge they faced now was how to get a cheeseburger into the dinosaur's mouth. He was tall to, too tall to feed him by hand, and they were afraid they'd gobble him right up. The wisest and the oldest of the seasoned wedge fries spoke up and offered his owl. They gave the owl a juicy cheeseburger. The owl fly high into the sky and over the dinosaur. The dinosaur noticed the bird stood on his back legs, opened his mouth, and with one giant gulp, swallowed the cheeseburger and the owl with it. The french fry people gasped. The old season wedge fry shuddered. The tallest, thinnest shoestring french fry stepped forward. He was the local sports star. 
he offered to free throw a cheeseburger into the dinosaur's mouth. With no time to spare, he grabbed a cheeseburger, lined up his shot, and threw the cheeseburger with a flick of his wrist and a little jump. <laughs> the burger flew through the air, but sadly the dinosaur was too tall and the cheeseburger missed his mouth and exploded all over the dinosaur's knee. A thick beefsteak french fry stepped forward and offered his expertise as a hunter. The dinosaur was too big to hunt, but with his slingshot, the beefsteak french fry could shoot the cheeseburger right into the dinosaur's mouth from a safe distance. He loaded the cheeseburger into the sling, stretched it backward, aimed, and let it fly. The cheeseburger tumbled as it flew high through the sky. The dinosaur saw it coming and opened his mouth big and wide. The cheeseburger flew over the dinosaur's lips, past his teeth, right down his throat. After a big bite of french fry and three cheeseburgers, something changed. The dinosaur was finally satisfied. So much so, he let out a rumbling burp and out flew the owl. He hadn't eaten it after all. Thrilled at their triumph, the french fries all left their houses to get a closer look. When the dinosaur saw all the little french fries and tater tots and noticed how scared they were, I'm really sorry, said the dinosaur. I didn't mean to scare you. I was just so hungry. Thanks for all the cheeseburgers. Can I have more tomorrow? <coughs> the french fries were thrilled. Their plan had worked and it was time to celebrate. The french fries all gathered in the middle of town where their magic giant fry had grown in, had grown, in their tightest and brightest spandex dance suits. The whole village of french fries danced in hopes of awakening the magic fry again. But something else happened. The dinosaur, seeing all the dancing french fries, began to sing with his new voice and kept the beat with his big club tail. For the first time ever, the French fries heard music and had something to dance to. That's when they realized that their giant French fry wasn't magical at all. It was the spirit of the villagers dancing. And with the help of the dinosaur, their home was more magical than ever. The French fries crowned the dinosaur their king. And from that day forward, he was known as M.C. Fryosaurus and dropped the hottest beats in all the universes. Some days, if you listen carefully, you can hear the pulse of the potato dance beat coming from the thin layer of ketchup spilled on your fridge years ago. inspired this week by a couple different things. Um, so I'm just going to pull up something. I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys if it'll work. I'm not really sure how all this works with all this technology. It's because I wrote a song, guys. I wrote a song for this story.
Because could you imagine, could you imagine if I just looked out the window or you looked out your window and like there were just chickens going for a walk? You know, or like a polar bear sliding down the slide and you could go play on the slide too because the polar bear won't eat you because the polar bear's like, yo, we're the same. We're just different. Wizards, the UK. Flowers, elephants, the UK. Boston Terrier, Clay, Hogwarts, Florida. The food the bunny makes isn't actually real food. It's just sculptural food. It's a pun, because another word for a bunny is a hair. <laughs> Good job. Harry Buns Bakery? Harry Buns Bakery? Is that allowed? Because I like... Rocks for sprinkles! All right, look at this. Rocks for sprinkles. He gets a health inspection. That could be funny, too. The name of the gallery is called Not for Human Consumption. Bye. So thank you all so much for being part of the Crazy Fries and the Fry Source. That was a great story. Everyone's pictures were awesome. I really look forward to uh, seeing how everyone illustrates the story of the Harry Buns Bakery. And uh, I hope you guys all have a great week and enjoy the warm weather while it's here. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day and see everybody soon.